Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Steve, and in today's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at the Tissot PRX Powermatic 80 version. Now, I have reviewed the Quartz version uh, a couple months ago, and I'm going to be doing a comparison between the two in a future video, but the number one complaint I heard about that Quartz version is that they wish there was an automatic version. Well, <laughs> here it is. So, I'm going to be taking a look at that. Uh, momentarily, we're going to be getting up close and personal with the watch. But first, let me plug my merch store real quick. I've got merch, baby. So that link is in the description below. I'm going to post a link to Amazon where you can get the Tissot Powermatic 80 version of the PRX at, I believe, $500, maybe $515. But it's not going to be released until August, I believe, August 25th. So I'm going to put that in the link below so you can pre-order your PRX. And also I'm going to be posting a link for the Quartz version um, as well. So go ahead and check out those links below. And on the wrist today, I have my Omega Seamaster on the bracelet. I absolutely love this watch. And I was really worried about the bracelet. I was really worried about the clasp thickness um, or width, I should say. Really, I don't, I don't mind it at all. The review for this watch is coming out soon. Um, I have so many reviews to do, so many things to record and, and, and show you guys. So if you haven't subscribed below, hit that like button, the bell icon, do all that YouTube stuff. All right, enough of that. Let's go ahead and start this review. All right, and here it is, the PRX Powermatic 80. Now, the dimensions are pretty similar to the Quartz model. We have a diameter of 40 millimeters, a lug to lug of 44.5 millimeters, but it does have male end links. So the true lug to lug is 51 and a half millimeters. We have a lug width of 12 millimeters, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, the thickness is slightly thicker than the quartz model. This one coming in at 11.1 millimeters. And the weight is also slightly heavier at 135 grams. And for comparison, the G-Shock 5600 is right around 50 grams. This also does come with 100 meters of water resistance. This does come with a signed push-pull crown. So fully pushed in, that's how you wind the watch. In the first position, you're going to be able to choose the date by rolling it clockwise. And if you pull it out all the way, it hacks. And this is how you adjust everything like that. So let's move it to something a little bit more visually pleasing. Boom. There we go. Overall, it looks really nice. I mentioned this in the unboxing. I said that it didn't come with any AR, but it definitely does. Um, I do have here side by side with the standard PRX. You can tell it does have a little bit of AR coating. So maybe not much. And I guess that is a downside is that I wish they would have put another couple layers of anti-reflective coating on there but it does offer some for the most part this watch is vertically brushed but it does offer areas of high polish so the bezel on the sides and in between the links they're all high polished and it offers a really good contrast it looks very nice whenever you're actually wearing this watch on the wrist obviously i'll do a wrist shot later and you'll get to see how exactly how it plays with the light itself the Dial you can see has that blue sunburst effect and then also it has that waffle pattern. And that waffle pattern I was kind of hesitant on in the beginning, but now after wearing it for a couple of weeks, I can really say that I do enjoy the waffle pattern on this. Like you can tell it's obviously an homage to the Royal Oak, but they pull it off very nicely. I, I really am enjoying the way this looks. Also the dial text is very minimal. You have the Tissot and 1853 at the top, PRX, Powermatic 80 at the bottom, and bordering that six o'clock indice, you have Swiss on one side, made on the other. You have that date window at the three o'clock. It's bordered very nicely. I do like how they added a little bit of stainless steel trim around the outside. It's something that it needed. Um, the quartz didn't have that, so I'm glad that they put that in here. It really adds a little bit of flare when it comes to that date window. All right, moving down to the bracelet. It flares out at 27.4 millimeters with a nice seamless transition to the bracelet. 
and it tapers down pretty heavily to the butterfly clasp here to 17.6 millimeters. And then they added Tissot in 1853 on either side of the opening there. I really like that it balances out. It, it doesn't just say Tissot at the top and it's blank on bottom. Something about that, it really resonates with me. I, I don't know if it's if I have some slight OCD, I don't know, but I do like how it's balanced out visually at least. Uh, the buttons, very nice open up and then you get to see that powermatic 80 movement and just to make quick note it does have quick release spring bars on this bracelet so i'm assuming they're going to release either new bracelets for this or maybe some rubber straps or leather straps so i'm excited to see what Tissot does i don't think they would add these in there if they didn't have a plan to add extra strap options but we shall see in the future all right, so here are those 12 millimeter lug width openings I was talking about earlier. Beautiful exhibition case back done very well. High polish on the case back itself. And we have the text running around the outside. Now I don't see, and I don't know if I could pick this up on camera. Let me see if I can focus in there. I don't see how this opens up. I don't see anything like a uh, little lip or anything to remove that case back. So I'm interested to see how that is actually removed. So the Powermatic 80 is based off the ETA 2824 movement, but its power reserve is cranked up to 80 hours, increased from 38 hours by reducing that frequency from four hertz down to three hertz. And something I didn't really realize is that the Powermatic 80 is laser regulated at the factory. Um, they don't have any sort of regulation screws or anything like that. So I'm not sure how you would be able to um, regulate it at all. Uh, unless I guess you send it back to Tissot. But I guess that's one downside about the Powermatic 80. But if you don't have to mess with it for a while, um, I, I guess it's not that big of a deal. Custom rotor on the movement itself. And you get those 80 hours of power reserve, like I said before. Pretty cool. Um, I can see the allure of um, an exhibition case back. I mean, I am wearing my Omega, which does have the exhibition case back as well. Um, if you're like a first time automatic or if you're just getting into watches, I should say, and this is going to be your first automatic watch, I can see why you would want it. Um, it is cool to see, but that's a different discussion for another time. But overall, very well constructed, and look at that dial. Man, I love that thing. Ooh, that looks nice. All right, got the bracelet back on, and after removing and installing the bracelet, I can say it didn't take too long. It's not as quick as I've experienced some others, just because that case back does come out a little bit, and it's a little hard to get your thumbnail in there to move it around, but Overall, not too bad of an experience. Like I said, I'm excited to see what kind of new straps to sew releases. I assume they're going to re release a rubber and a leather option. I don't think they're going to release another bracelet. All right, one big negative that this watch has is going to be the amount of loom on the watch. On the hands and on the indices, I wish they would have put a little bit more just to give a little bit better pop at night it does have a blue tint to it i'm not sure exactly what kind of loom it is but it does offer a little bit of blue tint i just wish there was a, a little bit more applied or maybe like a, a few of the pips on the outside around the indices something to give it a little bit better of a of a pop at night you can't have everything that you want on a watch but i just wish they would have put a little bit more thought into the loom now Let's go ahead and get a wrist shot. I'm going to be taking off my Omega Seamaster and man, the loom on this, beautiful. And yes, I know it's a diver, but man, I'm kind of kind of irritated. I scratched it up quite a bit. And I know I said I wasn't gonna get irritated, but man, oof, it hurts, it hurts. All right, let's put that down and get a little wrist shot action with this. And there it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. Now, I know that some people wish this watch was a little bit smaller. 
Uh, but for my wrist, I actually like the way it feels and the way it looks. So if you have maybe under a seven inch wrist, it might be a little bit too big, flaring out a little bit too much on your wrists. But for me, not too bad. Let me see if I can focus in a little bit better on that. There we go. I like the flatness of the links. It plays with the light so nice. And that dial with that sunburst effect and that waffle pattern, man, I'm liking this watch more and more every single day. And I, I love the quartz version, but with this being automatic and that waffle dial, I think, I think I'm gonna have to go with this, but we'll find out eventually. I am going to be doing a comparison between the two. Where is it at? Where is my watch? Oh, it's over there. Oh man, I can't wait to do this video. But it's, it's going to be pretty nice. See, I like how this sunburst effect looks just f on a flat dial as well. Oh, man, I'm so excited. I don't know which watch I'm going to keep. I have no idea. We'll see. We'll see. But, all right, that's enough of me in this view. I'm going to go ahead and turn that camera over, and I'll give you guys my closing thoughts and opinions. And there it is, the Tissot PRX Powermatic 80. Man, I love this watch. This is my favorite casual sports watch to wear around i usually wear the diver i usually wear the omega around but for like a little bit less dressy occasions i'm going to go ahead and pop this on take it out and i have to worry about anything it is very nice watch i love this thing um that dial that dial all right let's, so let's get into the pros and cons before closing out the video and we're going to start off with the cons and just like the quartz version the loom on this watch is not good. And I know it's a sports watch and, it, and it's not a true dive or anything like that, but it would be nice to have some loom on the indices. Uh, doesn't have to be much, maybe a little loom pips on the outside track. I don't know, maybe a little bit more on the hands. I like how it's not overpowering. I like the stainless steel hands and everything like that, but I wish the loom was just a little bit wider, a little bit more thick, thickly applied. Um, something that can actually, you can see at night. Now I do like that it's blue. That one kind of plays into the theme a little bit, which is good. But I wish there was just a little bit more loom, more than like five seconds worth of loom, so I can actually see something in the dark. One thing that the PRX is lacking in is the amount of AR coating on the underside of the crystal. And at this price point, I think they could have add another couple layers of coating, and that would have made a world of difference. Now, it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's not the, the most terrible thing I've ever seen. But I've seen a lot of micro brands out there that do AR much better than the Tissot. And I don't know if it's because of the flat piece of crystal. I'm not sure. But it just seems like there could have been another couple of layers, and it could have been perfection. But... For whatever reason, they decided to go with like one, two layers, and it, it does protect a little bit, or I guess it does give some sort of anti-reflective uh, properties, but it just, it it could have been more. And that's like the only, I don't know if it's a con, but it's, it's definitely something that is, I'm iffy about. And the second con, again, same as the quartz version, is the thickness of that butterfly clasp. It seems like it kind of protrudes out a little bit. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but it kind of flares out a bit. And it seems like I'm going to eventually start scratching that thing more and more as I wear it. I feel like if it would have been a little bit more flush, um, a little bit tighter to the wrist, I don't think that would be much of an issue. Right now I haven't scratched it much, but then again, I haven't worn it much at my desk. so. Um, we'll see in the future if that is actually an issue, but it just seems to be a little bit thick on that butterfly clasp. That's the same thing I said before in the quartz version, so that's one issue that they didn't really address. But one issue they, they did address, and this is going to go into my pros uh, part, is the date window. And yes, it is at the 3 o'clock, but now it's bordered in that stainless steel trim, and I really like that. I really like how it breaks it up a little bit. If you could tell in the in the standard quartz version, if you haven't seen the quartz review, by the way, I'm going to post it up there. Um, the date window is not bordered. It's just beveled in and it goes into the date wheel. This one actually breaks it up a little bit, gives it a little bit better contrast 
and it actually takes place of an indice. Right, well, the indice is still there, but it kind of flows better with that indice there at the three o'clock. So that is going to be my first pro and actually an improvement over the last watch. The next pro is that Powermatic 80 movement. And while it's not as accurate as the Quartz version, it is still surprised me a little bit. Now, this is my first experience with a Powermatic 80 movement. And while it is only three Hertz, you have 80 hours of power reserve. But this accuracy, the accuracy of this movement, I should say, is about plus three, plus four seconds a day over the course of a week. So, I mean, that's pretty good for an automatic watch. I was quite surprised. The, the sweep actually is not that jarring. You know, it's not as smooth as a four hertz sweep, but still not too bad, not too bad at all. And now it's not going to miss the indices um, as the quartz model did. Now, I want to, to say this before I, I get into the rest of the pros. The quartz model, I caught a lot of flack or should I say there was a lot of, of negative comments coming off when I said that it was missing the marks, uh, missing the seconds indices. It is so slight, like it's grazing, if not hitting all of the indices. So while it's not hitting them directly on, it is, if it's not hitting them, it's skimming them. So the quartz version is still very good. It hits them for the most part. I wouldn't worry about that whatsoever, but back to this watch. The dial I was on the fence about. On the one hand, I've already had the Victorinox Inox Automatic that had a waffle dial. I thought maybe it's gonna be too much of a Royal Oak homage. I didn't know what to feel about it. I didn't, I didn't know if it was, it was gonna be too much. You know, I like the sunburst dial of the quartz. Is, is the waffle aspect going to be, you know, just gonna cash in on that whole craze and then I got it on the wrist and I saw it play with the light I saw it with the sunburst dial effect on there as well I like it I really do genuinely enjoy it now um that was one big thing that I was really hesitant on before I got the blue again but looking at both of them now I am very happy with that dial. It looks really good. There's no issues with it. And um, yeah, there's there's not much more to say than I, I really do like how it plays with the light inside and outside. It's, um, it's great. It's great. Sometimes I can't look away from the watch. And the rest of the positives, pretty much the same as the quartz. That bracelet, I love this thing. How it alternates between brushing and polishing in between the links, fantastic. The brushing on the on the actual case with the polished bezel, now it has an exhibition case back that's polished. It is nice. I can't say more than the, uh, to the overall construction of the watch. And this definitely should last you a long time. Um, I don't know if this watch is going to leave my collection. The Quartz one might. But we'll see about that one as well. Sometimes I like to have the quartz, um, a quartz option in my collection. So, yeah, the, from the construction, the 100 meters of water resistance, the types of materials used, 316L stainless steel, sapphire crystal. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's a great watch. It's, I love this thing. I love it, and I highly recommend you guys buy it as well. Now, I don't know how your watch is wearing your wrist, um, I know for my seven and a half inch wrist, it fits great. So I would be concerned if you had a smaller than a, say a seven inch wrist, I would try to find a Tissot dealer and try it on just to see if it fits well. Cause that's one other complaint I've heard. But for me, it's not a complaint on my end. I have a seven and a half inch wrist. If you guys have similar, it's going to fit fine. But that's the video. All right, I'm gonna pop up a couple of videos here. Go ahead, click them. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon, like button, follow more of my stuff, follow my social media. You guys know what to do. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one.